Pentaspartite pathway is also called hexose monophosphate shunt. It is a metabolic pathway parallel to glycolysis. The pentose phosphate pathway occurs exclusively in the cytoplasm. It generates NADPH and pentoses. Pentose phosphate pathway is a metabolic pathway parallel to glycolysis. It occurs in the cytoplasm and generates NADPH and 5 carbon sugars pentoses. Sleep pentoses are generated in this pathway, ribulose 5-phosphate, ribose 5-phosphate, xylulose 5-phosphate. Ribose 5-phosphate is used in the synthesis of nucleotide and nucleic acids. Ribose 5-phosphate is converted to PLPP and used in the synthesis of DNA and RNA. Pentose phosphate pathway plays a critical role in regulating NADPH and ribose 5-phosphate production. Then what is the role of NADPH? NADPH is an essential electron donor. It's required for glutathione reduction, fatty acid synthesis, cholesterol synthesis. Glutathione reduction is required for free radical detoxification. Some free radicals are generated internally. Others are externally generated. If free radicals overwhelm the body's ability to regulate them, a condition known as oxidative stress occurs. NADPH is required for free radical detoxification. At first, we can look at the number of carbons. Glucose 6-phosphate has 6 carbons. It is followed by 6, 6, 5, 6, 6, 6, 5, and you know this 5 carbon molecule. That's why right. ribulose 5-phosphate. Two NADPH molecules are produced in these reactions, in the first reaction and the last reaction. So, this is called oxidative phase. Glucose 6 phosphate, 6, 6, 6, 5. Two NADPH molecules are produced in the oxidative phase. After oxidative phase, non oxidative phase comes. In the oxidative phase, NADPH molecules are produced, but not in the non oxidative phase. As you can see, the total number of carbons comes to 10 in each reaction, 5 plus 5, 7 plus 3, 4 plus 6. So you can just remember 5, 7, and 4. Do you remember this reaction? Ribulose, ribose, xylulose. In the last reaction, 5 and 4 are used. 5 plus 4 equals 9. 3 plus 6 equals 9. There, 
GSLP and fructose 6-phosphate. If they need more NADPH or ribose 5-phosphate, they go back to gluconeogenesis pathway. The first reaction is USMLA high yield. Glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase is used in this reaction. Glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency is an X-linked recessive disorder. The main symptoms come from hemolytic anemia. Pentose phosphate pathway is the only source of NADPH production. NADPH protects red blood cells from oxidative damage, so the rupture of red blood cells may occur in the people with glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency. Now we can try a question. A 25-year-old African American man visits his primary care physician because his eyes turned yellow recently. He has just started taking the trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole for otitis media. Laboratory studies confirm hemolytic anemia. The reticulocyte count is elevated. What is the most likely diagnosis? The answer is G6PD deficiency. This condition occurs most frequently in certain parts of Africa, Asia, the Mediterranean, and the Middle East. Drug reactions are famous for initiating oxidative stressors, and we need to evaluate bone marrow function. That's it.